Hi, this is Eric Greenspan from 74 Systems, and today I'm going to show you uh, a few steps in making a feature image, which is a very important part of a WordPress blog post. And as you can see here, we just have a, a stock photo, and we're going to change it. It's not something we like. We just put it in there as a holder, and we're going to change it. And typically, the best way to do this, if you're not going to buy photography, which can be very expensive, is to take a picture. When you're at an event, and in this case, this is a, uh, a story about or a blog post about <clears throat> going to events. So if that's the case, uh, when we go to events, we take lots of pictures and therefore those pictures are our property. So we can use those pictures to do whatever it is we wish to do. So I'm going to open up one of those pictures in Adobe Photoshop. Now, if you're not familiar with Photoshop, you can use other tools, but I would argue that it's probably a good idea to at least learn some basic skills in Photoshop to do this. So this is a picture of myself on the stage at Sage Summit, uh, where I actually uh, spoke back in 2015. And I'm going to use this because, first of all, it's me. It suggests conference. And it has one of my favorite things, the Holstein Manifesto, in the background. Okay, so there's a number of ways you can change the image size and this is the first thing we have to do is we have to get the size right so i'm going to go to image size and you typically want an image to be about 672 by 372. you can proportionally grow it from there but it should be about those dimensions and it's different for every theme but that will generally work and the reason why this is important is because the image will show up on the actual post page it'll show up on the blog uh, matrix, if you will, where you have multiple blog posts. And I can actually show you that. The difference between seeing it here and seeing it in the actual blog, you can see how large it is here versus the size it is here. And you can see that these posts are different sizes. Uh, my theme does a pretty good job of adjusting them. Sometimes I just grab an image and you can see sometimes I make them 672 by 372. And here's one that doesn't even have one as well as this one, which we're going, we're in the process of updating. So in any event, so this is not going to work. First of all, it's, it's a little bit too, um, it's not tall enough. And, and, and it's also really not an image that I like. And while it does seem to size pretty well, uh, it's, it's not suggesting anything for our company or anything that we're personally involved with, although it does suggest that you meet people at a conference. So I like to personalize a bit. So again, I'm going to open up this image of myself at a conference, and another good one would be something like this. This is Angela, our business, um, my business partner and the love of my life. And this is Angela here, and she is at Sage Summit, and we bumped into Jeannie Whitehouse and a few other friends, most of which we had never met before. And this would be a great image too, because it suggests that we're at a conference, Sage Summit, um, and that you can see all the people in the background. We could use this one. So if we were to use this one, what I would first do is I would go to image size and I would set this width to 672 and you'll see the height automatically jumps to 504. I want it at 372, 672 by 372, but first I'm gonna do image size. Okay, so now the image is size to 672 by 372. And now I have to crop it. The difference between sizing and cropping is I'm literally going to cut part of it off. So if I went ahead and just cropped it right here by using canvas size in Photoshop, difference between image size and canvas size is watch what I do. When I put 372, it's going to leave the width, but it's going to literally cut in all directions the height, top and bottom. So I click OK, and that's pretty good. Now I could have also chosen to take it from the top or from the bottom, or use my selection tool and choose an area, which as I drag over top, you see height and width changes. So if I would have dragged it to the right height and width, you'll see this tool says 672 by 372. All right, so there it is, 672 by 372. So the next thing I can do if I want to is I can add a little text to this. So I'm going to put a, a quick text box and I'm going to type inside of that text box, um, meet new friends at conferences, set a goal for each event. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and resize that so you can see it. And I'm going to put a hard return after this. And I'm going to make the spacing proper. And I'm going to set the distance between, I think they call that kerning, right? Uh, I need to keep going on the size. And I want to right justify this because that looks the best in something like this. And let's take it off of their face and put it down here. And that's a good looking piece right there. And that could be our image. We can be done with that alone. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save this. Uh, it's going to save as a PSD which means that it's going to allow me to come back and edit it later. And then I'm going to export it as a JPEG, which I can use inside of my feature image. 672 by 372, set as PNG, I'm going to switch to JPEG. Then I'm going to export it. And it's going to create a new file. And I want to make sure it doesn't overwrite the last one. So... I'm going to put 672 by 372 in the title, export it, and I now have a great file that I can use right here. Okay, one last step. I'm going to right click, choose open with, and I'm going to go over to this utility called Image Optimizer something you can download on the Mac. I'm sure there's something on Windows as well. And what it does is it will make the image compressed to its best ability. It just reduced it almost 14%. Now that image is ready to be added to the feature image. And the feature image is here in WordPress. And I'm going to remove it and add a new one. And when I say set feature image, I'm going to go back to my finder grab the image that I just properly resized, cropped, and optimized. I'm going to drag it into my WordPress images. Wait for it to do its crunching. It's breaking it up into different sizes right now. I'm going to add my alt text, which is very similar to my title. And I can also put in a description that uh, an image of new friends taken at Sage Summit 2015 with Angela Rust representing. And at that time, it was School of Bookkeeping. Now, a me. Okay, so that's it. And I click Set Feature Image. And you'll see it appear right here. I'm going to click update. And then when I go and look at it again, you will see the image. Now, 672 by 372 is smaller than the image that's allowed in my theme. While it's an ideal size, you can see what it did. It's, it's a bit pixelated. I don't mind so much about that. I'm okay with it. It'll look really good here and more importantly when i go to post this into social media the image will look great with facebook now if i wanted to i could have just increased it by 50 percent on both the horizontal or on the um the height and the width and it would uh have made an image that would have fit better for my particular theme but i was showing you what most themes use and it's a pretty darn good look a little bit pixelated so i'm probably going to change that um, for my purposes okay so that's how you create a feature image uh, for most themes not mine because it's a little more advanced uh and 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 the steps that you need to take do not forget that the image is important because you're going to share this in social media and the size and the dimensions matter because you want Facebook and Twitter and the rest to pick it up. But you also want to make sure that you don't make too large of an image. So the reason why 672 by 372 is better than the larger size is for that reason alone. As you can tell, while it may be a bit pixelated here, it's not using up as much bandwidth when I download the post. And that is an important piece of the puzzle. You don't want people coming to your site and leaving because it's too slow. 
And lastly, you want it to fit in social media. You want it to look good. By the way, if you do a lot of posts and make a lot of images, I strongly and highly recommend that you use a CDN. You can ask me about that at one of our webinars. We've got one coming up here in looks like three hours and 38 minutes. Check it out at astudemy.com forward slash webinars. I'm Eric Greenspan for 74 Systems, our other company. And I look forward to seeing you soon on one of our webinars or chatting with you. If you need help or want to learn more, schedule a free consultation right at the top at 74systems.com. Thanks so much.